What's up, y'all? My name is Ian Edwards, and welcome to the Soccer Comic Ramp. Uh, we got the usual suspects, but before I identify these individuals on my screen, including the guy who looks like a villain from an old Eddie Murphy movie, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're listening to the podcast, uh, you could also watch it on YouTube at Ian Edwards or Ian Soccer Comic Ramp Edwards. And uh, if you're watching, you could also listen on Omni and uh, iTunes and allthingscomedy.com. And if you go to allthingscomedy.com, uh, some of the best comics in the world have podcasts there with a variety of topics. So, you know, give that a check out when you get a chance. Uh, sponsor of the podcast is, uh, I forgot. I forgot the sponsor of the podcast. Uh, on the Volley on of Power. On the Volley of Power. Right. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm blanking. Uh, too many gummies at night. I got to stop taking these gummies. I'm going out of town, so I won't bring them with me, so uh, my head will clear up. But mm -hmm. on the Volley of Power uh, you go there, they got tanks, tees, hoodies, sweatshirts, and hoodies, male and female with soccer slash uh, hip-hop logos and emblems on the front dope use my promo code uh comic rant get 20 percent off at on the volley apparel.com and uh yeah we'll just go into everybody who's here we got martin actor comic uh you seen him in the movie the hunt you heard him and he's been the voice of video games kill him if you get a chance in, in a video game and he's a <laughs> spurs fan and uh yeah. we Neil Chakravati, who looks like he's in his childhood room, the way that thing is set up <laughs> with his Chelsea flag in the back and the and the the, 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 the nice sweatshirt on, and kind of, kind of feels of, like my childhood. Yeah, kind of feels like your childhood. Yeah, um, like Neil's dressed like they won the Champions League final already. It's just <laughs> it's just a midweek game. It's just a midweek game. <laughs> uh, so Neil Chakravarti, comic from San Diego by way of India. And my man, Lee Hudson, who uh, it's like 1.30, past 1.30 a.m. in the morning in England, <laughs> Southampton fan, comic. Uh, check him out on Instagram. Got some funny clips. What's your Instagram, Lee? Uh, Lee Hudson Comedy. Lee Hudson Comedy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Boom. And uh, he's wearing a Portugal shirt. Now, tell us why you're wearing a Porto shirt. Um, one, my Southampton shirt is in the wash because I went for a run the other day in it. Um, <laughs> but also, I, I got some Portuguese friends, uh, all Porto fans. They're part of the uh, Super Dragos, which is the ultras for Porto. Um, I've been out there and watched some games. Um, they've also come over here and watched some Southampton games with me. So I've got the better deal um, mm -hmm. in that exchange. Um, <laughs> Hilarious! <laughs> I, I remember the, the, the first the first year we did that. Um, I went out there and watched Porto Benfica um, mm -hmm. when Porto Porto won the league as well. Oh, so um, with Mourinho? Then, oh. No, no, this is post Mourinho. This is um, uh, Jesualdo Ferreira, I think, was the manager. Um, but then they came over to the UK, and this is when Southampton were in the Championship, and they came oh, in shit. December in the freezing cold and watched Southampton versus Blackpool. Um, but uh, one of one of Martin's favourites, Greg was Raziak, scored that day. So it was uh, <laughs> it was fun times. <laughs> my favourite. Oh, hard to hear you, Martin. Yeah, one one of my favourites. I I covered him. I actually was his translator on his first game in England when he came to play for Derby County. I was here, and mm. there was nobody, and, and he scored a goal in his debut. And then the English uh, writers came, and he couldn't speak any English. So I served as his as his uh, translator on his first day in England. And then he had a great career uh, in championship because the two times he tried to play in the Premier League, including Tottenham, didn't work out. But in the championship, he scored, I think, like 70 or 80 goals for a few different teams, especially Watford. And for Southampton, he was pretty yeah, good. Scored a lot of goals for us. Was great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're happy now, Martin? Because you wanted to talk about that topic before the podcast no no i wanted to talk about something else that yesterday you know we had coffee and we discussed different leagues and different teams and we we talked briefly about french league and the fact that uh, pochettino will not win the, another title he, he com continues to lose titles and right now with PSG, which is very hard to do and uh, they're about to lose the title to Lille team 
And on Lille team, one of their best players is a 37 years old defender whom you didn't re uh, remember, but I did remember him very well. And I think Lee, you remember him very, very well. Because yeah, Jose Fong. Yeah. How do you remember What's, him? Jose well, Fong. I, we spoke about it yesterday and I still don't remember him. Who is, who is he again? <laughs> Fong, again? Yeah. Portuguese. Portuguese yeah. Center, yeah, center back. He, um, he, he played with us all the way from, from League One through to the Premier League. So um, he was a captain as well. Um, so yeah, he's. Um, I, th I think a lot of fans were unhappy with how he tried to leave the club, kind of thing. He thought he could get a big offer, and it didn't really work out for him. I think he went to West Ham and was terrible. Um, but I mean, the time he was at the club, he played well. He was really consistent. Like I say, he was part of the group that took us from League One up to the Premier League with uh, Lallana and Lambert and people like that. So mm. yeah. And now he's gonna win League One as one of the key players for Lille. Well, slow yeah, down, man. He has to win first. This ain't no Man City <laughs> deal. <laughs> nah, they're, 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 they're going to lose that title, PSG, because um, Pochettino's still got that Spurs stink on him. Mm. <laughs> it's going to take a few years nice. to wash out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <damn. laughs> See, Martin, when you try to be nice to Lee, <laughs> serve you right. <laughs> serve you right to try to be cordial. Hey, we've still got Spurs Leeds to talk about. I mean, well. he's literally in Alta where, so... <laughs> You, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's, a, there's a lot of things you can talk about, but yeah, let's talk about what happened, Martin, with Spurs and Leeds. You guys got drilled. I mean, at this point, the season is over. I don't think it really matters. I think they want to just, you know, finish the season. It does matter. <laughs> what are you talking about? You you had a chance. What, 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 do you, what doesn't matter? If you win points, you have a chance to qualify for Europe. If you don't lose points... Do I want to be in the Europe, Euro, Europe League? Uh, I don't think I want to be in the League Europe. Isn't there another league below the Europa League? That I don't even want to be in it more, more than the Europa is, is, is that Does that start this season coming up? Yes. Yeah. So you you wouldn't fight to not be in that league? That's what we're trying to do, yeah. No, no but right now you are. You, you are, are seventh, and that's so, where you're headed. Yeah, so, so you saying it doesn't matter is you're, you're not being honest like why would you want to be in that third tier european league mm. playing what day did they play is it that midnight on they play yeah they play 2 a.m on the, you know between <laughs> thursday and friday night <laughs> between yes. thursday and friday night spurs get to go and play the team who finished sixth in slovenia or something <laughs> yeah. they have to they have, they have to wait till the last moment to know who their opponent is <laughs> <laughs> so what do you mean it doesn't matter I, you know what I think what matters is at least you have a legit chance of winning a trophy next year in that league so congratulations and Leeds beating you into that league bro well man winning a trophy that's what Man City did today I guess mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah they beat all of us <laughs> <laughs> you know you're included too it was it's not just Man United uh, but and then anybody see the game today? I, I watched the Man United game today. The game. Man United, Man United reserves. You mean Man United <laughs> reserves? I've seen, it, I've seen it. I have. I had a couple of couple of points that I because I just watched it actually. So I had a couple of points about that. And here's the thing, you know. Uh, I had some. I had some funny. I had some funny beats prepared for that one, but because because I had to tape an audition for a role of a re reporter after that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stick to the reporter side of things. So I'm gonna, <laughs> now I'm gonna be the reporter. I'm gonna do the true mm -hmm. and only truth. So, so here's the thing. Because uh, we all know all reporters only tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah, yeah. So here, here is the thing. I actually understand why he played that type of team. What I don't understand why he even brought Rashford and Fernandez uh, in the second half. I think he should just leave them home for that game and let them rest and just stay at home. And just play those guys, you know. I, I see that he was always also trying to, to to fuck with Liverpool a little bit because Leicester was in a funk as a team, and they were on the verge of slipping again out of top four. And this win gives them like a, a lifeline, pretty much, and and puts them in a very good position to finish top four uh, at cost of Liverpool, because Liverpool are the the, the side who is realistically pushing for that fourth fourth place. I mean, Chelsea will finish third. United will finish second, City will finish first. So now it was between Leicester and, and, and Liverpool for the fourth uh, place. And the fact that he decided to rest his players against Leicester, not against Liverpool, eh, it's clearly a knock at Liverpool. And, and Liverpool might, be, uh, might, might, might have all the right to be upset about that. 
and they have to play another game on Thursday. And they played their uh, their best team uh, yesterday, I guess. They had to though. Yeah, they played their best team yesterday. So so yeah, he will have a rested team against Liverpool. Liverpool will play the same players. It will be interesting to see. Well, my response to your stuff that you just said is: listen, I, I, I listened to Steve Nichol on ESPN, and he did make a point. It's like the Liverpool game is not as important, I, I feel. Like, Leicester was third. So I don't want to lose ground to Leicester. So if Why I not? was... Uh, if I was Ali, like, uh, Leicester's third now because they beat us, right? No, they're but, fourth. Well, they're, they're third now. No, no they're yeah, third yeah. now. They're <laughs> third now. So I don't want the team that could that's closest to us to get points to take second from us. So I would have taken a fielded a stronger team and a wielded, weaker team against Liverpool. But and because and you always want to grab the points that you can grab as opposed to let's get those points Thursday. Because what happens if you don't get them on Thursday? Well, I don't think Ollie's thinking like that at all. I mean, I, practically, like, Manchester United has already secured top four football. How does it matter where yeah, but, the table but, finish? But you don't want to be Spurs and come third in a two-horse race. No, but, yeah, I mean, that is that wasn't a two-horse race when there was actually two horses in a race. No, no, you no, are I, not in a race anytime. No, no, I understand. But you, it, it's not a good look. No, but uh, to there be is... second there, no, that, all that's that if, time and that, risk that's, it. No, but that's only if there is nothing else to gain on the other hand, where I feel actually, if I, I, I kind of exactly get what all you was trying to do. I mean, talk about taking out an opponent for the next season. You make Liverpool play uh, Europe no, 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 football, that's Thursday point. night football that's next a, season. That's, a, that's a, another point I was going to get to, but there's different ways to beat Liverpool. And one of the ways to beat Liverpool is by losing to Leicester, by yeah. fielding... Uh, 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 your your reserve team. I think so, it's pretty smart. It's so, one so, of the smartest things so, I've seen. It's, 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 so one, it's, it's a good chess move. It's a good yeah. chess move. But I'm just saying, for me, I, I just like winning now. Yeah, but a, you you know you like it even more next season when you don't yeah, have exactly. to worry about Van Dijk fresh coming back. And you don't have to things. worry about maybe Sadio Mane finally figuring exactly. out how to play football again. And there are two things. First, is them playing. The well, well, Martin, hold on. Martin, hold on. Martin, hold on. Martin, hold on. Let, let's play. Martin, hold on. I didn't understand what what uh the last part of what Neil was saying. Sorry. So I was saying that. I mean, of course, I get it that you want to win right now, but you'll you 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 want that feeling right now, but you'd want. You'd like it even more when you don't have to worry about Liverpool next season because history says that no team that has ever played Thursday night football has ever competed for the league or been realistic in competing for the league. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to worry about a fresh Van Dijk. You don't have to worry about a fresh Diogo Mess. You don't worry, have to worry about Sadio Mane figuring out how to play football again. So you, <laughs> you, you have one, one of the main guys that you okay. have to worry about is taken out of the equation. I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea thing, do the same last yeah. game of the season. And that's oh. one thing. Second thing is, if they play Europa League, not the Champions League next season, you kind of eliminate it or make it least, uh, less less uh, interesting on the transfer market, you know, because some players who might consider both Liverpool and United would prefer Liber uh, United because they'll play in the Champions League and yeah. Liverpool won't be playing the Champions League. I, 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 I don't believe in that point. People know Liverpool's problem this year. You know what I mean? They, they know... Nobody's going to doubt that Liverpool won't be back next year. It's, that's it's, what it's said about Arsenal for, for a so while. What? That's, that's what said about Arsenal. Yeah, but it takes like 10 years of that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, like no, everybody knows Liverpool's problem was all their, their central defenders got injured and that pulled the team apart. They know when those guys are back, which they will be next year, it, it's, it's worth going to Liverpool. It's Liverpool. You know, it's it's Liverpool. So yeah, I, but I, if your options I, are, you know, but I like I like what you you said, yeah. Neil. Neil come with the stats all the time, so you know that's that's good. You didn't like what I said. Nah, I I don't because it's too it's too cliche what you said, but oh, it, yeah. and it only and it, but and it only it doesn't apply to Liverpool. It's Liverpool. 
people are always going to want to play for Liverpool, especially they just won Champions League. They just won the league. Everybody knows their problem is injury-based and that next season will not be like that but as long as Klopp is there. Class player like Mbappe, or if you're a top-class player like Neymar, right, or at that level, you want to play in the Champions League. Even you don't want to take a break for one year from playing Champions League. I mean, that, it's, that's true. That's true. But, that's, that's true. But, but to, the, the whole point, my point about Liverpool is then they'll... They don't buy Mbappes. They actually they don't are, buy. Are, they, they don't buy Neymar's. They're actually they mentioned as the team destination team for Mbappe. They're mentioned, but listen, look, look at their mo. Like mm -hmm. they actually, if they have a player that gets as big as those guys, they sell that guy. They they never buy that guy. They don't make that guy, and then sell him. But they don't buy that guy. They they would they they would not in their last. Not in the last fifteen years. Oh, from they Liverpool. bought Suarez. They bought. They bought. But Lip, but Suarez. They may. You know, Suarez mm. was at Ajax, bro. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right, Ian. But I think from an opponent, from a very selfish opponent's point of view, I feel the fear was that Liverpool is taking that next step, where from now on, with with Jurgen Klopp, with this world class team, with having won the mm. Premier League and Champions League back to back. You now actually the destination for the next level of players. Right. Not just happy with uh, you know somebody from Southampton. No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even try to get one in. It, it just happened. Today, today I'm on his side. <laughs> well, I've just well, been spending a lot of time with fishermen, so you know. It's a bit, it's yeah, I know. Neil Neil just came back from a vacation for, from Belize. So tell, tell, tell me what centre back they could have bought that was better than Van Dyke from Southampton. I, I know you don't even have to get back to me at that. <laughs> the way the, the way Van Dyke played at Southampton at Liverpool, I can't even believe he played for Southampton. It's it's, it's great. He and also that's, that's for, a half ass dig. He played also for Celtic Glasgow when Celtic Glasgow lost 4 1 to Legia Warsaw in the uh, championship qualification. He was in the, as a center back for Celtic Glasgow in that game. So I remember him very well. Who? Van Dyke. Oh, Van Dyke. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, like, we're a little bit off it. So I, I just want to. So, you know what? You, Martin, you did make a point, mm -hmm. and, you know, and Neil kind of backed it up. But, uh, as far as like Manchester United today losing to Leicester with that team, like uh, like I said, you know, I, I wasn't thinking ahead like Neil was or probably Ollie was, but uh, that that's pretty good planning and that's another way to hurt Liverpool. But I, it, I was still excited when I saw the lineup because I like I want to see there's certain plays I want to see play, and today I saw Ahmad play, and 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 if you saw Ahmad play today. His his second or third third team, you know, type of, MLS. and you're like, you're like, oh man, we yeah. we just ripped Atlanta off. <laughs> we only paid thirty five million for that kid. Who's how old is he? Like, he's gonna grow into something. Like, barring injuries, you know, let me knock on some wood on my floor. <laughs> but that's what you want to see. Like, what that little kid, like, using his body to hold off grown-ass men and shield and make moves and not panic. And in the first half of the game, in the first half of the first half, you know, they, they had us and then we just, they scored and then we loosened up and Greenwood did his thing. But you, Van Der Beek got to get a little run out there. And then I forgot the guy's name. His father used to play for Cameroon. Elder something. Uh, he he was like another young kid, and you and it's like, oh, he's got a little something too, and then uh, Matic, you know, showing why, you know, you know, you keep a Matic around, and Twin Sabi was shaky at first, but then you settled in, and him being next to Bai, you saw it's like Bai calmed him down, and he started like chesting the ball down and relaxing, and then and Brandon Williams playing out of like corners and tight spaces for the most part. So I just, it was just good to see, even though we lost. And uh, yeah, Martin, you might be right as far as like, why did Ali bring on those guys? But we were under a little pressure and you, you needed to relieve that pressure a little bit and make them respect us a little bit. And like, like try to like settle with their, with, you know, like keep the, keep, keep the goal that they had ahead of us. 
and just backed them off a little bit. But overall, like one of the best losses of Man United I've ever seen based on potential. <laughs> Lee, what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, like everyone said, I can completely understand why Oli picked that team. And mm-hmm. um, like I say, it's, so it's everybody here is smarter than me. All right, cool. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a good exercise for Oli to, like, like, I mean, you're saying you want to see those players from a fan's perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good from Oli's perspective as well to see how ready some of those players are or not. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, Ahmad showed that he isn't very far off now. He, you know, he, he can right. play a role next season. Um, so it, it's good for that sort of thing as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, just looking at the table now, like Leicester, that puts them on 66 points with two games in hand over Liverpool. So if they hadn't won, they would be only <laughs> on 63. With Liverpool, if Liverpool won both games in hand, they'd be level with them. Um, so, yeah, that was that was a huge three points that you've given Leicester there. So that means if we beat Liverpool, Leicester owes us. Oh, big time. They owe you however many millions they get from qualifying for the Champions League. <laughs> just hand that over. Do, do that. We got to give it, send them our PM. <laughs> At least go 50-50 on it or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, we got some money on that Champions League spot. It would be a shame for Leicester to lose that Champions League spot. So do you think Martin or just anybody, what do you think of West Ham's chances? Of getting to know. <laughs> no, they don't have any chances. They blew it. They blew it? I mean, listen, it's still a very good season for them. So, you know, we blew it. It's a kind of a harsh word. Obviously, when you, when you, have, uh, <laughs> when you have your hopes up, well, if I go for, a, for three days with the top model, uh, I would have my hopes up. But then at the end of the day, the fact that I went on three days with the, the top model is already a success. So, so it's the same with West Ham. Is that a Spurs attitude about life in the Premier League? No, it's a West Ham attitude about life. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they shouldn't be that high, and they, they, but they were that high, and it's still a success. Uh, however, you know, they came up short. Yeah, I mean, if you look... If you look at the recent games they had, like the loss, the one they lost to Chelsea, that happens. Chelsea are a good team, but I think the three-two loss away to Newcastle and the loss to Everton this week is is what killed them. Um, if they win those two games, they're right in the mix. But lo- losing away to Newcastle was a, a big, a big wobble for them. And then yeah, this weekend as well killed them. Yeah, but Newcastle they actually played very well recently. Mm-hmm. They actually uh, found uh, a second wind, as as I say. They kept uh, they kept winning in the last month and and won some important games. They beat completely. Uh, they hammered Leicester this week. Crashed Leicester. Yeah, yeah. They crashed Leicester with yeah. four uh, four nothing up and, and they scored four win. goals before they let Leicester have a goal. Mm. Callum Wilson's on fire. But that's the thing. Like a lot of people might be thinking, Steve Bruce barely made the team survive, but they had massive injuries. Newcastle. Yeah. This year, an injury like in the Corona for for St. Maximum, like he's just getting over mm-hmm. Corona. So then he's back. So to have him, him on the field with Callum Wilson, who had a big injury, who was scoring for them that got them ahead in the table or got them in a decent spot in the table. Uh, you know, it's like, and now they're back. And then Willock from, you know, the on loan from Arsenal. Like, uh, like that's that's a team. Willock, I would, like four goals in a row, yeah. And, yeah. and Wilson is such an interesting player because it's the same in Bournemouth. You know, he's often injured. He's he's injured a lot, but whenever he's not injured, he's actually very very efficient. Very Callum, efficient. Will, Callum Wilson definitely plays for any team on his Bournemouth schedule. <laughs> like like he, like for Bournemouth, he start the season out, then get injured, be missing, and then come back at towards the end of the season. And if he comes back early in the season, he'll get another injury just to balance out the time that he needs off. Not that he needs it off, but it, it just—it's it's just the way his body works. He needs to do something different, but I, he's effective, man. If you had uh, him and Harry Kane in the same team together, you might get a complete season between them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but listen, but like to be to honest, you would you could use him at Southampton. You could use uh, Callum Wilson. Oh, I wouldn't say no. Yeah, I mean, then, Jay Adams is so frustrating as a player. I mean, I mean, unbelievably frustrating. I, I think got, got, got an assist today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the last, the last game you guys lost, I think, in the on Saturday on Sunday, he missed. He missed. Yeah, the Liverpool game. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Terrible. I think Shea Adams is growing into it, yeah. and it's like very ineffective. He's, no, it's it's the process of growing into this thing. And he's I got think four shots on goal and seven goals. That's not that's not even close to good enough. 
No, it's not, but he's growing into that's why I say he's growing into it. I feel like next season he'll be better, you know? Hmm. And see, no, we, we, we pulled him out of the championship and he's, yeah, he's taken a little time to adapt, but he's been a very useful player for us this season. Yeah. He's a hard worker as well and he, he contributes to the, the high press, which is obviously one of Hassan Hall's main things. I don't like even it. though they're diff- even though they're different positions, I would trust the future of Shay Adams against the future of Ross Barkley. That's an well, interesting point. Ross Barkley point. is, uh, I, I think, is much older than Shay Adams, isn't he? Yeah, Adam, Adams isn't isn't too old. He's still got yeah. a few more seasons on Barkley. Yeah, but right. Barkley's at that stage where we're kind of talking about the winding down at this point. He shouldn't be, but he will. He's because about he's, 27, he's, 28. Yeah, well, that's still 24. Young. Yeah. yeah. And I know they're not the same age, but I'm just saying, like, in, in say, in three years, like, Shea Adams may do more in the next, in his three years coming up than Ross Barkley did from 24 to 27. I mean, Ross Barkley moved to Chelsea and at around the same age that we're talking about Shea Adams right now and then mm-hmm. never really made it as a starting 11 player. I think he was on Are the fringe. Are you kidding me? He's one of your best players. No, he was on the fringe. Like He was benched <laughs> nah, initially nah, nah. by Kovacic and uh, Loftus-Cheek and then eventually Mason Mount, all these guys who came in the last two years. So, yeah, he's never really had... Uh, he probably didn't make the best move. Uh, but from a Chelsea point of view, it was great. That's, that's that's the move that got him in the England squad, like like because there there was a moment when he played a few games in a row and did mm, yeah, yeah 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 and and so like when when Chelsea bought Ross Barkley, I was shocked. To it be was honest, a steal. it was a steal. No no no, you got yeah you got yeah Everton stole from you. No guys. no no, he was he was one of the high you know highly rated young guys. And we got him for 15 million, which is almost unheard of for an English uh, player, any position, and you know, let alone a midfielder. How much do you think you can get for him now? Anything over 15 million, which is still a profit. And you think he's you can get... 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly, easily. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if he gets upwards of 30 million on this guy. <laughs> Lee, what do you think Ross Barkley's worth right now? I think in today's market, you could probably still get 15 to 20. Um, not the 30 I was talking about. <laughs> but I, I, think they, I think they can recoup the money on him. Um, right. I think he was towards the end of his contract Yeah. when when Chelsea bought him. He had a year left, so let, um, Everton just took the money and, and went for it rather than losing for free a year later. But I don't know how much he has long, uh, how much he has left on his Chelsea contract. He might end up walking away from you guys if that runs down. I think he has a couple of years. Yes, guys, more, I want to so. completely Ma- dismiss... Martin, let, Martin, let him finish and then you jump in. With, let him finish first. Yeah, I think uh, I was saying he. I think he has a couple of years. So I, I think this summer is going to be the one where it's not just him. There's like at least uh, a dozen players on whom we're going to make the call in terms of selling them. So uh, I, I think Barkley's going to go as part of that bunch and try and uh, offer someone a, a Barkley drink water double deal or something. Well, it's going to be a single <laughs> deal because drink water is drink water is a, pretty much a mascot at this point. Okay. <laughs> oh, you still got him? Yeah, we still we got. I was looking at the list. Somebody sent this list today, and there's like 38 players we have on loan. Who? Where is he loan right now? Drink water. He's in Turkey. Turkey. Oh, oh. oh so, you so know you should loan him out. Because you know what? I'll tell you something. I was watching the game on uh, on Sunday because I was after my second vaccine and and didn't want to leave my couch for the whole day. So I was watching the game at Juventus against Milan, and the third goal for Milan, who won three nothing. Was scored the by Tomori. Tomori. He was very good in this game. Yep. He was really very effective. He's been good. Like he's benched their captain, you know, Roman Noli, who up till a year ago was one of the most highly rated centre backs. Every time a transfer market transfer window comes upon, you know, all the big clubs are linked to him. He's gone there. He's their captain. He's gone there and benched him. So he's doing, he's having a good uh, time in Italy. You think, you think that would bring him back and, and play yeah. him next year? Well, that's the that's the fuck up we did. Like we did, we have him on a loan deal where Milan has the option to buy him for twenty eight million. Ooh. So we can only get him back that's if Ross Milan Barkley choose money. to. If Milan choose to not uh, exercise that uh, that option, 
So it's just, it's it's not in their hands anymore, you know. Oh, no, so they're gonna buy him then. There's no reason for them not to buy. But him. that, but the but the thing is, Milan being Milan are incredibly stingy whenever it actually comes to putting money on the table. So there's a slight glimmer of hope of hope that they will. But like the way Maldini is speaking about him, selling for more. Easy. Yeah, probably. But I don't know if these clubs think that far ahead. But like Maldini has been, you know, speaking, doing his phrases. And when you're a young centre back and it's Maldini talking about you in uh, in mm. those uh, words uh, all the time. It looks like Milan does want to get him, but mm. I heard that um, it, it's, it's all dependent on Milan qualifying for the Champions League as to whether they can afford him. And obviously, that win yeah, against Juventus yeah. has, no, 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 has, no, no, has no, put no, them no. has put them right in the mix. Of course, they're gonna buy him. Martin, Martin, you have to. If Martin, if you see somebody yeah. talking, you gotta let them finish. Yeah. Or go ahead. Go ahead, Martin. No, I said it's it's easy decision, you know, because you can you can get more for him if you decide to sell him eventually. So so it's an easy yeah. decision to to get him for that type of money. I, he was fantastic in that game. He completely stopped Dybala. He put Dybala in his pocket. I mean, it's it's a no brainer. He's athletic. He can he can head the ball. He reads the game very well. <laughs> look at look at Neil beaming with no, I, I agree. Know, pride or loss. It's not right. It's it's a, it's regret because. I can I'm beam in really, with regret. I'm 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 remembering those names, you know, Lukaku, Salah, De Bruyne, and like this is this might just be one of the of those. And this is actually one of the few things which I was like, I just didn't understand what uh, you know Lampard was trying to do with him. Like he completely shunted him out, and that was one of the big blemishes on his record. Uh, even though Tomori was kind of handpicked by Lampard back at Derby, and then you know. Eventually in the first team at Chelsea, but like he after the point just completely shut him away. Well, well, let me just like ask some questions about like what happened this week. So, all right, so we dealt with uh, Spurs losing to Leeds and sliding down the table towards Arsenal because they're connected to each other and they just want to be together so bad. No. And uh, no. Chelsea beat. Man City this weekend. Now, let me ask you a question. How many times did you beat Man City this year? Twice. Out of how many games? Three. Three. One more now, to go. There's one more to go. Would you have rather have lost this weekend and win the Champions League? Because you know how hard it is to beat a team, and a, any team in the Premier League, but any team, now you're Man City, you got to beat them three times in one season so you I mean, almost it's almost like you if you if you a genie came on the bottom gave you three wishes <laughs> two wishes you it feels like you used them up already i mean of course if those are the two options i would prefer the winning the champions league final but i don't think those are i i'm, I'm not a big believer in law of probabilities so no I, I, yeah i mean <laughs> law, law of averages sorry so i think it's a fresh game the what stays away from this game is the confidence you get. The fact that, you know, like a lot of these previous podcasts, I think people have commented too. Like, I need to have more faith in Chelsea. So I, mean, I try to get. I know yeah. it's finally working. <laughs> I, I no, but but there, there's a reason for that. There's a footballing reason for that because I haven't seen this team and these group of this group of players be consistent at that level. Mm-hmm. I think now you see these two wins. Where it matters is now some of that confidence. I'm sure it's not just me, right? The players are thinking the same too. Some of that confidence that, yes, we can do it against a big team on any given day. Because, right, so far, Tuchel has played Spurs, Liverpool, United, uh, City twice, uh, Real Madrid twice, Atletico Madrid twice. So that's almost 10 games. We've won all of them except for... uh, You didn't beat us. United, except for United. And, And... in all of these games, literally the opponent has had maybe a handful of chances to do anything. So that but some big of those game games, pedigree you, is gonna you, st- go that that big game pedigree is gonna stand us in you know good stead in the final is what I feel. Lee, did you do you think man do you think Chelsea blew it by beating Man City <laughs> this week? I don't. What I will say first of all though is that um, last week before the Real Madrid game. Um, Neil was actually fairly confident in Chelsea, and so was I. I, I said Chelsea would yeah, get the job done against Real Madrid, right. and uh, yeah, I was, I was um... wrong. I went with Martin. 
and me and Martin were wrong. <laughs> You guys, you guys, you guys were thought Zidane was going to step onto the pitch and win on his, on his own. <laughs> <laughs> he always um, pulls something out of his ass, so I thought he would do it again. He yeah, his, ass, his, ass is, his ass is empty now. There's nothing left. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Um, but um, no, I think um, I'm not reading too much into that game because yeah. I think both teams kept the cards close to their chest. Like Pep played five at the back, which he never normally does. Um, you know, he played two forwards that neither of them will probably start the final, I don't think. Um, Jesus right. or Aguero. Mm. Um, I think he'll go with the false nine in that game. Um, then obviously Chelsea, they played Alonso instead of Chilwell. Um, so that they, they've mixed up as well with their, their selections. And, and, and it's also luck. Like an injured player trying to panenka <laughs> but but one thing I do notice that Mendy as a goalkeeper and somebody else said it too but I was watching him he looks completely different than he did at the beginning of this season like yeah he's really good he's like he's playing like a Chelsea goalkeeper right now he was kind of playing like you know the third place team in La Liga uh, goalkeeper which is what he was I think now he has the confidence of yeah, he has the confidence like he he belongs there and he, belongs he's gonna here, yeah. I feel like he's just gonna get better and better he's gonna do some outstanding things for y'all oh, I'm sorry Lee, did I cut you off now the goalkeepers go through ups and downs the the hair is the best example and he was the best goalkeeper in the world and then he wasn't you know so 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 we'll see however I think you know one thing about Chelsea and and one thing about this game once I didn't watch it live I watched it later uh, first, I thought uh, first I thought that City kind of took it easy a little bit on on Chelsea because of the Champions League final. They didn't want to reveal everything. But then I actually watched. Uh, they tried to win the game. Uh, Guardiola was actually very upset they didn't win the game, and he was upset and, and yelling at referees that they didn't give the second penalty, which most likely I think they deserved. In that game. was a penalty too. Yeah, Th that was a hundred thousand percent. They would have won if if there was a penalty. Probably because it was one one and they were pushing and I think they would have won the game, you know, with this decision. But Sterling Sterling could have had a red and that would have changed the game as well. And I don't think the first one was a penalty. I mean, I, I don't really know why you're giving out penalties for something where it's not even the line of the ball. Like he's literally stepping way outside the ball. Well, that's fair. Uh, it's a, a fair play, fair play award. So. And then what <laughs> is uh, Billy Gilmore supposed to do? Like he's supposed to guess which way the opponent is is choosing to turn and move like he I think it's because the arm I think it's because the arm came round it made it look it made it look like a penalty yeah, but it's, it's, it's just so soft so that's why but I agree mm. like the second one I was that it is literally the first 30 seconds of when I started watching the game because I couldn't get to get, find a bar to watch mm. the game at all and I finally found one for the last 10 minutes or so mm. and I'm like oh Zuma what are you doing <laughs> so you, uh, as soon as you found a TV, you yeah. saw a Zuma foul <laughs> Sterling. I knew exactly. I knew what he was trying to do, to, though. He was trying to do the same tackle that he did earlier on because I saw it on replay. And he's actually good at those tackles where he, you know, from behind he snicks it off you. But he just got the timing wrong, and it led to a few more of those, you know, the knee touching the 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 thigh. And he got incredibly lucky. But that entire last ten minutes—that's almost a red card play. Uh, I I think it was it was a very old school defender uh, kind of thing where you <laughs> throw the line and you hope to get lucky. <laughs> Lee, what do you think? You don't think that's a red card? That's, that's, that's a diplomatic way of saying it is a foul. <laughs> but saying it's old, well, old school defending. You know when you say like you know when you say well back in the day my mom used to hit me. Well, okay. you know it's child protective services now. But Neil, who would you rather have, Zuma or Tomori? Right now, right now, if you can have those two players and you pick one of them to play for you as a center back, who would you rather have? The thing is, I really rate Zuma too. So, but I, I would say Timori just because he's also better on the ball and you know he's younger. He has more of a. Uh, we've probably seen what you've seen of Zuma, and um, but Zuma like the presence. How old is Zuma? Air, Zuma is around twenty six, and Timori is probably 23, 24, 23, I think. Yeah. But like you know who, what Zuma uh, gives us in the air, is just it, it's it's a cheat code at times. You know, you know who has also gotten better, just like Mendy's getting better. Rudiger has gotten better under Tuchel. Like, yeah, he's impressed me. 
yeah. like a lot. Oh. I'm like, oh shit! Like you could see it happening. Oh, this is the different dude that's playing. So yeah, like he always had this leadership quality among him, and you know his like this passion and this zeal of because che- I mean Chelsea for the longest time haven't had leaders, so he mm-hmm. had that leadership quality. But what it seemed like was he had that part of his game without having the actual skill set part of his game. So mm-hmm. then you're all you're doing is you're you you're left just being a Instagram hashtag at that point. Like you 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 come out of the game and you're like okay hustle we go again and stuff. But your ta- your tackles are mistimed. You're um you know you're pulling you're pulling shirts. You're giving away needless fouls when when it actually matters in the game. But now it seems like his quality of work on the pitch is actually matching up to you know what he. Otherwise, to the to the, to the, to the swag, yeah, to the, to the, to the swag, swag yeah. that he that he pretends to have. Like yeah. now he's playing like yeah. playing with that swag. Uh, I want to give uh, Neil some props. Like I sent Neil three videos today, uh, because Southampton played. Who did you oh, play? Oh, the ones you sent me. Sorry, Lee. Yeah, you said Lee. <laughs> sorry, so I sent Lee three videos today. <laughs> and uh, felt like you were you were taunting me via NBC. <laughs> <laughs> like. And so, so who did you play? Uh, Crystal Palace. Palace. Yeah, you played Palace, and the NBC reporters just kept on saying, "This is the worst team in the league since January calendar year." Like I recorded. Well, I said it, it a week ago. Yeah. I know, but I recorded it three times and sent it to them and di- from different shots of them saying it. The commentators during the game said it, it's, and then I didn't even record all the times they said it but that so thank god you guys well they listen today. to the podcast they listen to the podcast yeah. and they, they just you know like <laughs> repeat the wise wise people saying wise stuff wise you just said you'd rather play in the third european league <laughs> with spurs at the beginning <laughs> of the podcast how no, wise is that, that. I didn't say you, that. you basically I'm did you said it doesn't I'm matter not play at all <laughs> well you're gonna be it. in the third Nah. You, you, right now, you got to be smart like Arsenal and drop down to ninth or tenth. Where are they to get out of that league? Arsenal's at ninth, so they're almost. It's it's safety is actually finishing tenth. You should be fighting for ninth and tenth. All right, all right. If you want to not play in that league, so what do you think about like winning today, Lee? And oh, why? It's good. We, we, we hit the 40-point mark, which is, I mean, we were going to be safe even if we'd lost today. Right, um, right. With, with 13 points ahead of Fulham, who are third bottom. So we're still way, way out of all of that. Um, but I can't argue anyone saying that we've been, you know, the worst team in the league since uh, since January, because it's it's facts. Um, but we're lucky that, you know, the league isn't, the league doesn't start on the 1st of January. So, um, you know, <laughs> the season it's a whole season and we played well in the first half so that's good enough for this year um and plus we've had we've had injuries like our record when we don't have walker peters in the team our record when ings hasn't been in the team uh, our record when romeo has been injured as well they're three key guys for us and they've all had incomplete seasons so um we're different when we have all of them and, and today, today was good um it was good to see ings back in the team so I think if we had Ings against Liverpool at the weekend, we might have done something there. Because I think we gave Liverpool some real problems at the weekend, especially in the second half when we had some pace on the field. We just couldn't finish the chances that came. Adams missed some chances, you know, in this game. Like, yeah, I think one of them, though, we went through we, we, we went through on the break and they squared the ball to Adams, but the ball was too far in front of him, which gave Alisson enough time to close him so he couldn't finish anywhere. If the pass was better to him from Teller, then he could have had a bit more... Of an option of where he put the ball, so I'm I'm not reading too much into that. He got a goal and an assist today, so I'm I'm happy with the guy. He's 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 had an okay season for us, um, but I think keeping hold of Ings will be key for us for next season um, because without him, we don't. You know, Adams is improving, but he's not a 15 to 20 goal a season striker like Ings is. Right. So what what you you so remember how me and Martin were hot on Huth and Housel? At the beginning of the season, and I know I'm saying his name wrong. It's more fun that way. Do you do you believe in him the way I don't believe in him now? Oh, I, I I've got full belief in. Him. Like I say, we had we had injuries. He was naming kids in the team who I didn't even know existed from our academy at one point, um, because he's just not been backed by the board to 
to build a decent squad. Like when we have everyone fit, he has a decent starting eleven, and that starting eleven has gone out and got us some big well, results. So why aren't you guys out there marching and shutting down games? <laughs> <laughs> Like you weren't in the Super League, but you sp- you feel like your owners are are like being disrespectful to the fans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of people unhappy, and I think they're just sort of biding their time. If we'll see what happens in the summer, if we the team is doing just enough to stop people from really losing their shit at the moment. <laughs> right. Like it's, I think if if we if we were in, this, in the position that like Fulham or West Brom or um, or Sheffield United were in, then that, that might happen. Um, but for the moment, it's just a case of we're, we're just sort of ticking along and it's okay enough for people not to be too mad. Um, but I think if Hassan Huttle left and he said it was because of a lack of investment, then that would cause people to, oh, sure. to make should... a problem. I, I think if Hassan Huttle was backed, he, he's a top coach. If, if he gets backed properly with you know, the ability to go and buy the players who can play his system really well, then yeah, he, he, he's a top class manager. He should threaten the board. <laughs> He should threaten to not sign whenever the new contract thing is coming and say, you got to get me some players and try to, like, use his leverage. <laughs> so I mean, it depends, depends what, what the ambition is because the way the league, the Premier League looks in the last couple of years, it kind of, it kind of repeats itself every year in terms of teams going up and going down. It's the same teams every two years. Uh, like right now, Norwich and Watford are going up and they went down a year ago. And West Bromwich and Fulham are going down and they went up and down last two years, you know. So so probably next year Watford and Norwich will go down and Fulham and West Brom will go up again. So you, you don't want to join the Spurs. Track. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you don't want to be one of those teams. You don't want to be a yo-yo team, you know. You don't want to become a yo-yo team like Norwich, Fulham, West Bromwich and Watford and whatsoever, you know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, listen, you know, you got to establish yourself as a mid-table team. Uh, if you don't spend, I, I still believe Newcastle will, will find a way to, to stay, stay up because they're such a massive, massive football club with such a huge uh, support group. And I, I've been there, I've seen it. So, so, you know, if you're Southampton, you don't want to repeat those times where you were in the League One, as we mentioned at the beginning of, uh, of the podcast. I remember those times because they had, you know, buddy of mine, Saganowski, at the time playing, playing for Southampton. You know, so I remember those times, remember when... Kosovsky and Haito were there, and when Rashak was there, those were not Premier League years. You don't want to repeat that. No, I think it's 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 whiz. It would be so easy for us to become that as well, to become one of those yo-yo teams, and that's why it is a worry that yeah. the board aren't sort of establishing us as a because we have been established now for a while. We you know we came up. It's been a long time since we came back up into the Premier League, and we've done well consolidating our place in the league. We had a few high finishes under Pochettino. Um, and then there's sort of been a steady decline over the years when we had Poole and when we had Mark Hughes. And then when Hasselhoff came in, the, you know, the initial um, effect was there for everyone to see that we improved massively. But then now it's like, well, he needs to be backed. Otherwise, it, it's going to start going backwards. And it already has this last six months. But you um, had a great 2020, right? Like the entirety of yeah. the calendar year. Um, yeah, that, that, right that was because we had the starting eleven fit that whole time. Yeah, and then when Ings got injured, when Romeo got injured, when Walker Peters got injured, and there's also some players who are declining, like Ryan Bertrand has been really oh, solid I, for us. I haven't even seen him. He's been injured the last few games, but he's also declining as a player. I think his contract's up in the summer, so we'll need to potentially go out and buy a left back. And it's really annoying because we had a good young left back, Matt Target, who's now at Aston Villa. And he's playing really well for Villa. And he left because he couldn't get past Bertrand into the team, which was, um, he was an academy player for us, but he, you know, he, it was time for him to play as a first choice. So he went to Villa when they were in the championship and got promoted with them, which was, you know, fair enough. Um, the, I think he, he had a loan at Fulham as well. The good news is, like, if Hoos and left, leaves, by the time he leaves, uh, Pagetino will be fired from PSG and can come right back to you. <laughs> and like start yeah. rebuilding you again. So that's if has no leaves because we've not got the money, then we haven't got the money for Pochettino now. He's, <laughs> he's, 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 no, he's, he's no longer in our price bracket. He was I in mean, our price bracket when he got fired by Espanyol. But <laughs> but, but what if he fails at PSG? Like, wh- why should somebody from a high-profile team pay him 
to 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 do what? What's 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 failure at PSG though? Because he he won't get sacked if he finishes second this season. Because no, he won't. They were, they, they were second when he took suppose over. Suppose midway through next season. Yeah, they fight. Well, if, if if they're top of because if he wins a, if he wins a league there, which I'm sure he probably will next season, and then gets fired, he's still are you sure? Like, by, are you, by that are you sure he'll win the league there next season? Ancelotti's a failure. Tuchel's no, no, a failure. no. But <laughs> no, but those guys have trophies. They won. Are you sure? Pochettino will win at PSG next year. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think he will. I think Lille have put together an amazing season that they will not be able to replicate, especially with the additional demands of Champions League football next year. And I think they've got the squad for it. Um, Monaco and Lyon are decent as well, but I think PSG, they'll go out and they'll buy more players again in the summer. They'll buy um, some Lille players this, this summer. That's what <laughs> probably <laughs> do a buy-in and just buy your yeah. 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 rival's best players. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where do you guys think the the Champions League should be hosted? Because last England, week, oh boy, England, right? Yeah, because US residents or citizens are only allowed to go to UK. They're not allowed to go to Portugal. And I'm trying to go. <laughs> and I can't go. Oh, okay. to, I mean, Turkey, <laughs> Turkey, I can go, and Turkey would be great. But uh, Turkey looks like it would just won't happen in, because of the, it's in the red. Of it. Yeah. So I, I read, I read some things earlier. So well. Turkey, yeah, on the red list, like UK residents have to be put in a hotel for a week, costing two thousand yeah. pounds if they come back. So that's yeah, that's not going to happen. So the UK hosting it would be the most sensible scenario because obviously fans then don't have to travel. Um, right. Yeah, but the problem is there's two thousand UEFA partners and delegates. Yeah. Who would go to the game and if they came to the uk at the moment the uk aren't agreeing to waive quarantine oh. for them um so but the if, option if is two thousand there oh let him let him finish yeah, well, sorry. The, the, the other the other option is portugal to host the final and portugal wouldn't require a quarantine period for those people so You've got the problem that the English fans would have to travel there. Portugal's on the green list, so that's fine. It's just an additional cost for the fans. Um, but I think, you know, that could end up being the, the situation from what I've heard. It's looking more likely that it will be Portugal that get the game now than it is to be hosted here. And what were you going to say, Lee? I mean, Neil? No, I was saying that, I mean, I understand the fact that, you know, those UFR 2000, uh, the UFR contingent would have to go through some sort of quarantine. But then if it's Portugal, wouldn't that also be a similar thing? Like for folks who are going to come in from UK, they don't have to do anything? No, no there's, there's no um, restriction on that. Portugal is like the price of a, a holiday or a flight to Portugal from the UK uh, doubled on Friday after it got put on our green list because it's the only major country yeah. that's on the green list for Neil. us. Neil, Portugal's Florida is Europe's Florida. Bro. <laughs> but why can't they, but but why does U, Portugal have UK US on the red list? I mean, their red list. Forget about UK having uh, uh, you know countries on the red list. It makes no sense. Like I'm like <laughs> like the UK are currently um, banned from entering, or the whole of Europe is currently banned from entering the US, despite the fact that like in the UK we've got the best vaccination rates in Europe, and we're having like one death a day at the moment from COVID. So, yeah. But we still, we still can't enter the US. Um, hey, man, so. you, you say what you got to say to get on the, 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 the flight list. Well, that, <laughs> I, mean, that, I mean, that's easy for, I, I guess, some of you guys. But like for me, I have to go through the whole visa process and stuff. So I need some, <laughs> some uh, you know, lead in time to do all of that nonsense before. The game's on 29th. I literally have like 18 days if I even want to get there. So well good, well, good luck to you. Well, you, well, you book your tickets to... Porto to, to Portugal now. <laughs> like every day, I'm like the, the you know trying to see what UFR.com has to say about oh, where the game's gonna be at. Oh, so you keep like checking it like Dogecoin. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> see where it's at. <laughs> that and then go and check individual uh, embassy sites to know what's the latest advisory. Right. That's that's what I was like last week because I I had flights uh, booked. I I bought last year in on the Black Friday sales. I booked flights to New York for the last two weeks of May. And I've had to push that to July now until the US actually lets us in, so. Yeah. <laughs> and you, are you losing money? I had to pay a little bit extra because it's during the UK school holidays. So the flights get jacked up in that time because everyone wants to fly. Oh, okay. So yeah, I paid a little bit extra, but yeah, I, I'll be hopefully there the last two weeks of July. 
All right, Here, here's a kind of a fun question. Like, we know who's relegated. It's Sheffield, West Brom, and Fulham. And this is the earliest in any Premier League season that all the three relegated teams have been decided. Uh, everybody's season is pretty much... I, everybody kind of knows where they're going to fall, you know? Like, like, so the question is, Martin, what are you looking forward to? The most next season to see who's gonna be our manager and, and do you have any uh thoughts on candidates like who yeah you... I'll, take, I'll take hasam hoodle I, i've said it before many times yeah okay <laughs> you're 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 savage you're like hitting on a man's girl as he's standing right in front of you you don't <laughs> but i did it before that's why that's why i know you're pretty savage about that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, did, I, did a few times, uh, I wouldn't take pochettino back you know and, and we discussed that it, this is why i mean i have very fond memories of pochettino i really I'm, i have very fond memories of that of those times we played really attractive football we, we had some fantastic performances And uh, some of our players played their best football in their career, like Deli Ali, for example, right? Now he's a shadow, shadow of himself. He only had, uh, he had zero goals and one assist this season so far. So, you know. He hadn't played that much, so. He played like 200 well, minutes. Said, but, you know, it's a, he's a definitely a different player than he was under Pochettino at his, when he was at his best. So, so you can't even compare the two. It's like two different, two different players. Uh, so there are some fond memories, but you cannot, you cannot dismiss the fact that he just never wins, man. It's like he never wins. He did it. He had great time at Southampton. They played very good football. He hasn't won. Great time at Tottenham. Played some great football. Played some memorable games. Made it to the final of the Champions League. But he ultimately, he didn't win a single trophy. And now he's at PSG, one of the greatest teams in Europe, where uh, League One is almost like a, like a home run league for them. You know? And he, and he didn't win there. But he, he but, when he, games. But, but when he uh, got this there, is amazing. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. Mark, let me ask you a question. Martin, no, no, but this question is still going to, okay. it's still directed at you. So you're still going to get to talk, which is the most important thing to you. So yes, sir. when he got to PSG, where were they in the league? Pretty much the same. So, so he's, he didn't, they're where they were. Right. Well, he should win the league with PSG. That's what I'm saying. He should have. But you need a season to do. He has, even though I don't kind of believe in him either. It, mm -hmm. it, it's, he has a limited maneuvering room. No, he didn't have. He should have beat City in the semifinals. They they went to the final last year with two hells. So that's that's worse than last year to, to be in the semifinal. And I know it's a Champions League. It's but but even final. you said yesterday he beat Real Madrid. Did, who did he beat? Bayern and who else? And Barcelona. Barcelona. And Boston, Boston. He, he beat two legendary teams. But that's and, he, the and, and, he, and that's then he I'm ran saying. into a new legend. But that's what I'm saying. In every team, he has results, but he doesn't win trophies. That's what I'm saying. Every I know. year and every team, he has good results. But, he but I, I told you this first when you said, man, you should get him. We've had this conversation. You're just repeating shit that I told but you. I don't want you guys to win trophies. Yeah, I no, told you this two years ago. Here's an interesting question, though. So what? Go ahead. So all the all the managers that Spurs are being linked with now, none of are them, they, none none of them are winners. Who are they? They're being, they're being, exactly. they're being linked. So so you've got Ralph Rangnick, who is philosophically one of the best coaches and coach educators. He, he's European. He, B, he's European Bielsa. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he spawned a whole generation of these German coaches. He's the one who educated a lot of them and mentored a lot of them. You've got Graham Potter. Who I rate as a manager. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But but he's not. <laughs> oh my god! I would love I would love us to do like a live stream of the Spurs Twitter account announcing <laughs> Graham Potter as the new manager. <laughs> Martin, yeah. Martin. But like, but you you look at all these guys, even even Nagelsmann, who they were linked with, who would have been a great yeah. appointment, still not a winner. There's no proven winner that wants to go to Tottenham. But the, but that's what I'm saying. Like I I think. Well, I completely agree with what, what, what uh, Martin's saying about Pochettino. I just find it amazing mm. that Spurs would turn down somebody on those grounds. Like it's <laughs> and it's uh, and it's uh, listen, it's not that the, that the winners yeah. will not come. We have money, you know, and, and and so they will go come. It's a big club; they'll make money. I mean, it's it's easy. It's it's not like the coaches are oh, you know, like we're winners. We're not gonna take money from Tottenham. Of course, they're gonna take money from Tottenham. I mean, of course they will. 
I mean, your Long options year. right now are Maurizio Sari and uh, Allegri, <laughs> which Allegri, I mean, Allegri. Hasan Huta will take. Uh, has, 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 what, has, take. Has, has he won anything? <laughs> no. He's, but he's, I, he's, he's won but, the second but, division. But neither has Spurs. But neither has Spurs, so it's all good. Yeah. It's a match. I don't think he possibly can. And I, I think Ragnik also can, you know. And I think Allegri definitely did. did and he, he would, you know. And uh, But at the same time, Mourinho Mark, did. So. Mark, Mark, you knew he should get as a coach someone who will make Levy spend money in the areas that they need to spend money. Mourinho did. They spent money. They spent money. It just didn't work out with Mourinho, but they did spend money. But they didn't spend and You needed a whole new defense revamp. It's uh, still your problem. We do. It, like, maybe some of it... If I'm a coach, right? And yeah. If I'm a coach and Spurs wants me, I'll be like, yo... Buy, buy, get me some defenders, or I ain't coming. True, true. true. I'd say it's a valid point. I agree. And we need some defenders. I would say Tanganga is an interesting uh, prospect, but we generally need prospect. defenders. We yeah. don't have somebody like Fertongan was at the, in, at the peak of his career. We don't have that guy, and uh, we need that guy. We need we need someone who will be like the, the heart of the defense. Uh, if Hazan Hutel comes, maybe Vestergaard could be the guy. You know, from Southampton. Oh, we boy. Bring <laughs> wow, you're just savage. You just you just disrespectful. You just all hitting no, on no, all no, no, Lee. Listen, you know, like, you're hitting on Lee's girl, his sister, <laughs> his mom, work, man. Like, in, right in front of his well, face. He's a manager. My, my, he's his favorite players. That's how it works. I mean, you, you could bring well, that's how it works. <laughs> that is how it works. <laughs> if, Ragnick, if Ragnick comes, we, we want to find a Connor or those guys. Of course, that's how it works. You know, they bring their, their players. You know, so well, my, uh, there's there's my, no my... Pamacana. Pamacana is going to uh, <laughs> to buy him. What are you talking about? I'm bro? just giving you an example. Okay. All right. What I will say though is that you know Levy won't need to open his pockets to fund a rebuild because you're going to fund it with the sale of Harry Kane when he decides he wants to go oh. to a real big, when he wants to go to a real big club. Oh. I'll actually be very su surprised if both Harry Kane and Son don't leave this summer. Wow. It's not, I don't think it's just one of them. I think both will leave. Wow. Because they're both at that age where they don't have time to lose. If Real Madrid put big money on the table, one of them might leave. Sure, why not? So, Martin, basically, what you're looking for next season is not next season at all. No, no, no. <laughs> if we get the right coach, I think, I believe we'll be top 14 for sure. How? What if Kane is gone, bro? I don't think he's gone, but if he's gone to Real Madrid, it will be for like 150 mil, and that will buy us a lot of a lot of good stuff. Yeah, like the the 100 and million dollars you did with Bale. <laughs> no, for Bale we got listen for for Bale money we got six good players, and we got Eriksen was one of them for sure. You know, I think Alderweireld was another one. We we got some good players there. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then an injured Lamar. We Lamar. actually got better. We actually got better after after selling Bell. We we improved as a team. I know when Bell was there, you guys were in the Champions League. Uh, yeah, but we were, we were once in the Champions League. After he left, we were four times in the Champions League. So yeah, he would if he'd have stayed, you'd have been. Yeah, but we wouldn't have Ericsson, we wouldn't have Alderweireld, we wouldn't have those guys. You know, so you you also wouldn't have had Soldado and Paulino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they uh, were at, at bell times. They were at I, think, I think the problem with both Spurs and Arsenal, uh, we didn't get to sp speak a lot about Arsenal either, but it, it, it's not just having a new manager that's going to fix them because there's so oh, many issues at play. It's a different situation, Neil. You can't compare us to Arsenal who didn't play in the Champions League for five years and they're a complete mess as a team and they, they're way, you know, in way, they don't have anything to work with really. No, that, but that's fine. I, but Martin, I feel like Martin, I, feel I love how you. I'm sorry, Lee. I'm going to let you talk, Neil. Martin, you can't be offended that somebody no, is comparing your team to a team that won the league on more than one occasion. So yeah, like, but, you, but, like, no, that's a long time ago, man. That's no, long. Martin, but like, I, I agree you're a better team than uh, Arsenal right now, but I don't think you're going to be a better team than Arsenal at the end of the summer window because, yeah, as yeah, I said, yeah. I feel both Kane and Son are going to leave. And then if you look at both squads, you're practically the same and you both probably need a new manager and you, you, you're trying to kind of like build a whole new team from scratch. So uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be a very similar situation. So there's probably like two or three managers out there who are good enough 
to start that rebuild process for one of you uh, you guys and the clock's ticking whoever gets to that guy first is wow. you know it you, you need I to move think, fast I, agree. I think i think yeah, thank you, you neil you guys you guys just hired a coach who completely changed your team within within few months uh, you were in a, a big fat mess for for a year and a half with under lampard not and really now, no no i mean you you, you, you were pretty much at the same level tottenham we were pretty no much they qualify for champions league on the lampard what are you talking about before yeah. that we qualified they didn't qualify so we were like uh, we're talking about that moment the change happened but now you hired the right guy to change the team and you are into a good future you'll be com- you'll be a serious contender for winning the league next but, year. but we didn't have to buy any more players though is that what you're saying that's going to happen at uh, Spurs too yeah you also sold some players you know so yeah there there will be changes on the team 100% um, i feel i feel like Spurs and Arsenal are competing to be the team with the biggest gap in quality between their stadium and their playing squad <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little competition there between at least them. Arsenal stadium is paid off like <laughs> yeah. if Spurs leaves and Sun leave and Spurs has that stadium and then they have some coach that can't get you don't have no so your problem now is defense your problem next year might be defense and offense you, and, you and the fact screwed. and the fact that and a stadium like the crazy built to thousand at the stadium so you know that there's no really that oh, the of side, it's a, 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 yeah, the side the hustle side, yeah the side hustle isn't really happening it's an easy listen Two years ago, uh, you could make the same argument about selling Hazard, and you would think that's the end of the world if you sell Hazard. You I agree. I agree. You know, I rate Lampard so much for what he did. I completely agree with you there. So if if we sell Ken, it's not the end of the world. You know, there might be a different solution. There might be a different solution for us being great. Hazard was by far your best player of the decade, by far, and you yeah. are now actually better. I so, agree. But you can, yeah, but, can but only they, say that now that it has happened. You know, at that moment. it looked like and also one difference is chelsea at that moment had this secret you know it's not really secret but it had the escape from jail card with the best academy in uk with the you know, with a huge loan army that we could you know draw some players from i don't think spurs has those things but i agree right chelsea was uh-huh. in a very tough situation back then too uh-huh. Can I, can I can I just state another difference between Chelsea and Spurs at, in, at, in at this crossroads that you you're at Martin that they were at like your guy does not like spending money like He's spending money listen, no no good. listen yeah. listen Chelsea loves spending m- money so much and over and like no, they didn't not, <laughs> they'll cheat, they'll che- I know I know but they'll cheat <laughs> to spend the money like you guys won't even spend the money with so it's a different mentality i'm really i'm i'm dead up bro i'm really worried for spurs like like you needed the super league bro i mean i would be worried if we hire cam potter then i would be worried but if we hire the right guy <laughs> hire, if we hire if we hire uh who's your top 3 and he as expected brings five assists. who's your top 3 <laughs> manager give me a top 3 name just give me a top 3 yeah, name hasn hudel brings uh, brings uh, walker peters vester garden inks and i'm fine you know? was it walker peters yours yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh we, we, we're going to spend 100 million to buy him back yeah we're going to spend 150 million to buy him back oh man so so you you I mean, yeah because you don't want to win because you don't want to win You won't spend that money because you won't want to win trophies. Exactly, I get it. Uh-huh. Of course you wouldn't. Uh, let, let me leave. What are you looking for the most this season? We, we uh, just got um, we got Doc on Spurs. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing Spurs uh, uh, fall to pieces. <laughs> no, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 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 nervous about next season because it could it could go two ways for us. We could kick on and. we could add some decent players to the squad and build on the foundations that are there and do well and become a sort of established mid table team or the chairman wants their money and we're going to be in a relegation fight i really couldn't call it right now um and if things goes then that leaves a big hole in terms of goals so yeah i'm 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 nervous and just sitting and waiting to see what will happen i'll give you two players to come your nerves you can you can you can take eric dyer and serge orier i think you you should do those <laughs> wow <laughs> Hilarious. He's, he's always trying to pawn off. <laughs> uh, Neil, what are you looking forward to 
most next season. I think the the stat came out today that uh, with Man City having won the league, that we are now City and Chelsea are now on. Uh, we are joined second behind United on the uh, number of Premier League, both at five. So five each. Yeah. Five each. So next season, you got to get serious. You can't, you know, you, you have to start attacking the league from uh, game one. And that's the challenge for next season. That's the aim. We got to be very close, if not win, get very close to winning. Uh, make it a proper title challenge. And uh, I mean, everybody at the club knows it. Tuchel knows it. Uh, regardless of what happens with the Champions League final, a... Uh, he will still lose his job if he doesn't get to the league title next season. So, do you, do you think you need? That. Do you think you need to buy one of those forwards, Harlan or somebody? That's out I there? personally don't feel we need to because I feel that profile for a number nine. We have players like uh, uh, we we have Tammy, we have Jiru, we have Havertz, who's now playing a lot more like a number nine and doing well. But it seems very clear from the way Tuchel is laying out his team that he has no belief in uh, uh, Tammy or Giroud. So there, so there is, from his point of view, there is a vacancy and I'm pr- pretty sure we'll go and uh, buy somebody. And of course, the only other player that I've been saying for the longest time is we need a, a proper holding DM to buy. Uh, but, I mean, we... we Sissoko. Sissoko. <laughs> Sissoko's good, man. Why? Why not like that? I mean, it looks like he can do a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you need off your books more? <laughs> there's but, so many. That's there's so many. You can't now, we we have academic graduates who are better than that. So, oh damn! But, but, no, he is right. but we need we need we need to go get uh, get somebody there. But I mean, yeah, that's the thing I'm looking forward to. Uh, uh, I think with Tuchel for the first time in a long time at Chelsea, we've seen a team that. Uh, I think since the first half of the season with uh, Conte's first season, where I, I feel confident of our team going into every big game. It's not, you know, it's not like a 50-50 uh, all the time. So that has happened. And that sh- these are the pointers which should lead to, you know, a consistent uh, uh, title challenge next season. It's just, it's just hilarious to be in a situation we are in right now where we could actually win a, a very significant double when the, our highest scorer in the league is at six goals. <laughs> I mean, that's it's just it's just something incredible what what this team has been up to in the last uh, three or four months. Yeah, but I think Werner will score more goals next season. I, I see him being much better, and when he yeah. you know, learned the game a little bit, some of those uh, top level strikers who had good careers in England they didn't do very well in their first season. You know, especially when they came from yeah. different countries. I think he'll be actually very good. I think he will score twenty goals next season, and I, I see one player potentially being a very good signing for you guys. And I, I think Manu will also fight for him in City, which is Kamavinga. I think Kamavinga will be the hot yeah. guy yeah. this summer, and someone will get him. I think my choice personally is Declan Rice, but yeah, uh, Kamavinga is probably going to be a cheaper version. He's fantastic. I mean, he's fantastic, but like compared to Declan Rice, who with the English tax, I think he's he's gonna Rice is probably going to cost something around seventy, eighty million. And I don't think Kamavinga is going to cost as much. I'm into Declan Rice too. I I like I kind of like, but I feel like his name is coming up so much. I'm. I'm like starting to want him, but I think I only want him because other teams want him. I still, because somebody pointed out something today from Man U on, on one of the Man U fan channels that he doesn't show up when he plays us. And, and, and I know his type of job is the type of job you don't notice sometimes, even when you're doing it really well. But I don't want a player that doesn't show up against us. But he does but, show up in a lot of big games, though, like City, Liverpool. He has I, done. I, I don't know. It's a random thing. West Ham is like every time they're on the cusp of staying in the top four or getting back into it. You know, he's injured right now. But when he was playing, they faltered. So I, I I'm not a hundred percent, man. Um, I, I, like if we didn't get him, I wouldn't be mad. But I know we need. I don't even know if we need a central. We, I guess we do. I feel like we could turn somebody into that position from what we have. It, I, I feel like 
everybody thinks they should just buy all the time. But mm. you know, just watching our young players today, it, but but we'll just st we'll stay on this Chelsea. I think like, guys, Camavinga is a better player than Rice. I think he has much higher upside. I think he will be absolutely phenomenal. He might be the best player in his position five years from now. So whoever gets Camavinga will be a big winner, in my opinion, because he reminds me of Patrick Vieira. Uh, young Patrick Vieira, I think he'll have a fantastic career. And uh, yeah, whoever gets him, uh, I mean, if Tottenham can get him, I would be very, very happy. I don't think we can, but if, if we can, great. Um, but also, wasn't um, Lampard's obsession with Rice one of the contributing factors to his firing as well? Yeah, which, which kind of says that maybe the board is not as convinced. But again, like some mixed signals there where... Uh, it seems like some people in the board are really convinced, but mm. you know when uh, uh, something like a firing happens, there are these reports that come out of depending on which source you're speaking to. I find it really tough to believe that that something like that could actually be the cause of. Uh, oh no, not yeah. It wasn't firing. the main. Wasn't the main thing. But Especially yeah, when you, the team same, has central midfielders. Hmm. No, and but we definitely needed a holding DM. We don't have a real holding DM in. So in what the is squad. Conte playing? Conte is more of like a, like a you know like a shuttling DM. Like he does defense as plays as a defensive midfielder, but he doesn't like staying put like a Fernandinho mm -hmm. or a, a it, Fabinho or a Matic. I, I, it, it, but well, it's it's a, it's like accepting a style of play. What Conte does, in my impression, is. Like, so Pirlo, when he was a DM, or Carrick, or mm. one of those guys, those tr classic guys, they pass the ball yeah. to to the players. Conte will dribble the ball up to the guy. Yeah. He's going to pass the ball to him and say, here's the ball. Yeah, so, yeah. It, like, so he doesn't stay. And he's great at that. I mean, and he, he's great. He, at, he doesn't best. lose it. He doesn't make the mistake yeah, yeah. and have to run back. I mean, against Real Madrid, both legs, he was a man of the match. And if you see both the goals that we scored in the second so why leg, do you need a right? started with... No, because when you're playing those double sixes, you want somebody who can sit and you want somebody who can move. So his, uh, because that's what you're playing right now. We're playing Jorginho and Conte. We want to play and you're in the Jorginho. We want to play somebody like Jorginho, but better at tackling and being defensive. Why? Which is probably... <laughs> Why? Because, Just because those no, rules? Because jo no, because Jorginho isn't as athletic as uh, you a can life. say that, but I see making tackles doing stuff that you guys say he can't do all the time. As um, a good passer, he is a passer, with, and so is Rice. But I just feel we go to the next level with somebody like him. I, th I think Georgina will probably leave, and I think they will buy a holding mid, and then they'll, if for the games that they would play Georgino for his passing ability, that'll be Billy Gilmore in the future. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, and then you'll bring in another DM alongside. I think, yeah, but I think isn't the thing with Rice the club don't want the embarrassment of having to pay, which is a just such a childish thing. Yeah, yeah. It was, it's just such a childish thing. I mean, why would you think of it if you can? They don't want to get. They don't get Pogbert. Yeah, <laughs> like if you can get the price down, do you know how Chilwell initially the price was rated to be around 60, 70 million, but we eventually got it for forty-five. If you can do something like that with Rice, and we mm. know Rice wants, like I think among all our players. Declan Rice is like he's three generations Chelsea through and through. So he, Not I mean, anymore. he, he keeps talking about it all the time. So you you know he will try anything from his uh, side to uh, to come down to. You just gotta. Well, but let's not for, well, let's not forget Neil, who is the coach, who is the manager of the team, and the manager has to has to make decision first, you know. And we don't know yeah, if well, to hell wants yeah. someone like Rice because he might not true. even, you know, I mean, he might not even, not even think that he's a very good player. He might think that someone from Germany is a better player and a better option. True, true. And take someone agree. from Germany, yeah. and you, we see that Rudiger is playing much better under him. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he brings some German players. Yeah, I completely agree. I think there are a few uh, names I've Especially heard, but I haven't really seen them. Especially to make them. Werner feel better and Havertz, you know, to make those two feel more comfortable, they might bring two more uh, German players. I think the number of times I've heard this line of uh, argument, I feel Chelsea should just like buy a bunch of German bakeries or like restaurants and and like just have like a permanent lease on them. Like looks like these guys need a lot of Molly Cuddling. <laughs> I don't you don't want to put German players in a restaurant. No, you don't want to do that for sure. <laughs> I don't want to say bra bra yeah. bratwurst and pretzels at Stafford yeah. Bridge next season. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Have it on tap. <laughs> Who has the best worst food for games? <laughs> uh let me see what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward 
in joy and also in fear. Like next, it's it's crazy to say this, but next season it's going to be even tougher to win the league. Like this year, going into the beginning of the league, you're like it's going to be Man City and Liverpool. Nobody's going to get past them. Now Liverpool's going to be back. Ch- Chelsea's going to be on another level, and I believe that Man City will make a play for one of those big forwards. They're playing with mm-hmm. false nines right now. They have 80 points with three games left. And if, and I know they know math, like the the two seasons, the last three teams that won, won with more than 80 points. I know they got three. That means you, there's, you need... Last eight, four. We won with 93 four. to 93. So you, you need, even though they won this season already with 80 and they have a chance to get to 89... Yeah, you feel I feel like you need goals. They're mm. gonna they're gonna buy a goal scorer. Yeah, and that's gonna, gonna go Harry the, Kane. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna go hard for somebody, and uh, so they're gonna, you know, so, so the, it's it's gonna be tougher. I'm excited for despite that. I'm excited for Man United the prospects. Uh, we do need a DM, and we probably do need another defender, or maybe not, because Twan Sabi played great today. Bai played great today. Uh, you know, you, we, we lost the game, but we know, you know, we put a team together that hadn't played together before and they played pretty decent for at least a half. And so, you, you know, imagine what you could do if the, those players get used to each other. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited, but, and then we'll, you know, we'll f- figure out what we're going to do with Lingard and, and then Ahmad is going to be a year more mature. The first time I saw Ahmad play, I was like, he's a good offensive player, but today, on the track back, and and he handled his defensive duties impressively. So I was like, oh, so he's becoming a complete dude over there. And it's not just him, Greenwood. And when you watch our academy, like you know, like we got a good academy, and it's time to start. And we and we do use our players. And uh, so I'm excited about that. I'm excited. I just need we just need to make the right moves. And one thing I'm excited about was the Super League. And that the Glazers are going to have to do something to appease the fans, to mm-hmm. make them forgive us, for us for, to forgive them for the Super League, which we won't, no matter what they do. So mm-hmm. they're going to spend some money in the window. You know, they have to. There's, there's no way they can't. And we already got Cavani back. And as just as a co- cohesive unit, we're playing better and there's more belief growing. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to Eze. You know, not, well, not that we're going to get him, just like, you know, me and Lee were monitoring him this weekend. We've been monitoring all season. We've been monitoring before people were monitoring Dogecoin. And we were like, <laughs> buy as a low, sell as a high. And so next season, uh, based on the goals and the assist or, or assist to the assist to the assist that he had this weekend, keep your eye on Eze. So it'd be great to see him. Because if he plays in the Premier League the way he p- played in the championship, it's a treat. Like everybody's going to be. He's showing flashes of it this season. He's showing flashes of it, and it's, it's like you you're watching him grow into the league. Just like I say, Shea Adams is growing mm-hmm. into the league. You know what I mean? He's not regressing. So uh, it's it's going to be everybody's going to be a Crystal Palace fan. I'm also looking forward to uh, one thing that will happen on the podcast next season, which is the hostility between Ian and Neil. <laughs> we both will be under huge pressure to win the league. And yeah, yeah. The tension will build up. Well, <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it'll be hostile, but here's the thing: unless Ali loses the league by one point, he is going to get fired next year. I think it's the same with Tuchel too. No, Tuchel has, uh, one, has one more year. He's got no, one more year. Next season, if we don't win or come very close to winning the Premier League. He will get fired. Well, Even if he wins Champions League this year, no, no it doesn't matter. Oh, I'll get the entire matters. season. No, no, no. get the entire season. If he wins but... Champions League, you'll get the entire season. And if he comes close and does not win it, but loses by a few points, yeah, he'll be fine. Same yeah. thing with Ali. If Ali yeah. loses by a few points, he'll be fine. But if he, loses... but if he's like seven points or ten points off at the end of the season, yeah, no, I, I don't see Ducal staying on. Yeah. But, but where? But there's no more coaches left. Who are like we can't even name. We can't even name a coach for Spurs. We can't even name, a, like, who are these, like, they, the, the names are gone. They, they re-ran out. 
It, Chelsea it's probably going to get Conte. They always go back for coaches <laughs> another time. Like Marino. I mean, I mean, sorry. I mean, you keep thinking that, but then yeah. Roman finds a new coach somewhere. So I've stopped trying to you know rationalize that part of the thing. It's just going to be just going to accept that it's going to be ruthless. Didn't he want Chesov at some point, the the coach of the Russian team? Yeah, I think he did. There was a oh? rumor. Uh, Chesov, oh, the... coach Russia in the last World Cup. Yeah. Oh I really? Yeah. Martin hears rumors nobody here. <laughs> no, I mean, he hired Avram Grant, who was his friend, and then why not church us up? You know, it's. I know he, it's he's crazy. looking for that uh, Russian dude who eventually managed Hull. Um, Lutz, uh, Slutsky. Leonard, Leonard Slutsky. Leonard Slutsky, yeah. Yeah. You but never I... know. You never know. I mean, we'll be, Ma- you know, me and, me and Lee will be uh, just, you know, hanging out as the two mid table guys and watching you guys. <laughs> Martin, Martin, who's your top four? This season or next season? This season. Uh, I think because of the result between Leicester and and United, it will stay the way it is. Yeah. Mm. Except Leicester will probably finish fourth. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Lee, what's what's your top four? I think it will be City, United, Chelsea, Leicester. Three games left. Let me see. Liverpool, three per six. <laughs> How many games? Liverpool got four? They have three games, I think. No, I think they have more games than anybody. Yeah, they have they four. They play one more against than you. They, they have, have four. Four more games yeah. than you. Hmm. That's, so, so they can get they... a 69 at the most, and which means Leicester need three points from two games. Chelsea need... Five points. And they play first. Who, last who, game, who's, Leicester. who's Leicester's next games? They play first in the last game. That, that I know for sure. Leicester oh. plays first and Chelsea, so it's not. A, oh, that's not. not oh, it's not granted shit. that they're gonna. So the three points today was very critical for uh, Leicester. And we gave them now those three points. Yeah. So. Much. Much. Uh, unless, like, uh, it depends on uh, what Liverpool do against United. Because if they drop points there, then it's practically yeah, yeah. If we, if we, yeah, 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 yeah. If let's say Leicester, but, but what about West Ham? Because we don't trust West Ham. West Ham is done. If, top four is Leicester, done. I think top four is done. Top eight is done too. If Leicester slips, by top eight is done. We have one more manager on the market in the summer, so a good manager. So that's interesting. <laughs> say, that's say, say, say that again. <laughs> If Leicester slips out of top four, there's one more manager on the market, potentially for Spurs, potentially for someone else. So hold on a second. When Leicester knows that they lack depth and they need to get depth and start selling players, why would they fire Brendan Rodgers? Oh, they're not going to fire. He'll just quit and go to for a better job. To where? He's, he, Spurs. Spurs, how is Spurs a better job? You're eighth. <laughs> He's in... Third right spend. now. They're not, they're not gonna spend and, money. and you right. might lose, and you might lose Harry Kane and Son, and it's all the incentive to come there. We both know it. We both know it. When, when Chelsea, when Chelsea, what you can, you can. Martin, uh, I think. Martin, your thing is. No, it is. There are six, six clubs there. Are Martin, Martin, Martin don't stop talking for one second. There's a okay. disturbance. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Was it from Martin's thing? I think so. It sounded all robotic. You sounded like a robot was taking over. Go ahead, say something again. No, I said there are six I major clubs that. in England, and those jobs are still better than any other job. You know, like there are six clubs in England, and those jobs are better. Even Arsenal, Arsenal was struggling for us but, five years. It's a better job than Leicester. Arsenal is. But, it is. Les- but Leicester won the league recently, and they finished in the top five. It's not Recently. the level financially as an organization as those six teams. Even if Arsenal makes a very good case to to because they keep keep getting worse and worse and worse to not be in that group, they're still in that group. It's Man, a big how big, how big how are you a top six team and you didn't win anything? Because we're the top six team, not the best team. Simple as that. Now I think what Mar is saying that financially they can uh, attract. But uh, they, they're the sixth most. Uh, like right. I, I, I get that, but but doesn't Leicester have money? 
Maybe not they as much. Money as well. at that level. There's also so there's not just money, but there's an image of a club and uh, and and support and everything. You know, there is a top six. And it's 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 a name. Mark, a so Mark, let me ask you a question. Mark, and there's a reason why they were invited to the Super League, and some other teams weren't invited. To the Super I, I I get that, but like Leicester might be on the more on the verge of changing their image. There's a point when you became a Super League team. You weren't for the entirety of the Premiership. What if Leicester beats Man City? Like, I feel, or maybe I just want this, but I want Brendan Rodgers to win the FA Cup. I want Leicester to win the FA Cup. So now they, they won a league, a FA Cup, and, they, and if they finish in the top four... And? They, Brendan Rodgers ain't going nowhere. I think if I was Brendan Rodgers... I agree. I think if if I was Brendan Dodgers, even if the Spurs job or the Arsenal job co- comes around, like he's already managed Liverpool, right? So he's he's already managed a Premier League team that competed for a title. He ideally wants to get back to that level. Right. So he's probably going to wait it out till he gets an offer from City, Chelsea, Liverpool, or uh, United. So why would he want to? Why would he want to spend another? Even though even if he, if his salary might go up, he might. Uh, be at a higher profile job or what's the point when his actual aim is not to stick around at that level well here's the thing you know if he comes to this first first have the personnel to work with uh, maybe hurricane is not leaving maybe sun is not leaving maybe they buy some more players and they are a complete different team next year it's possible it's possible all right listen i don't want to have martin to have a Nervous breakdown. <laughs> Every thinking hour. about thinking about <laughs> like, life without kids. Just, and just son. Son. like like I, I really didn't think about it until this podcast. It, like in the middle of the podcast, when you, I think it was Neil just started pulling at the threads of Spurs, and I was like, <laughs> I saw like a, a ball of yarn instead of a sweater that was before me. <laughs> uh, uh, that used to be a team. But uh, yeah, well, guys, it's it's six. We did it. Uh, Lee, congratulations on your win. Neil, congratulations on the win. Hopefully, this win is not mm-hmm. <laughs> the last. <laughs> the, I mean, at the last against Man City. This season, I'm kind of rooting for Man City. I just think it's, it's as far as the Champions League, they're just due. Uh, the one thing I don't understand on uh, NBC today, uh, I forgot her name, the 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 ho- the host. She turned to 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 uh, the the ex Everton goalkeeper Tim Howard mm. and uh, the uh, the other analyst, and she's like. Do you think this Champions League game is the most important game of Pep's life? And they both said yes. And I was like, probably is though. Why? Because I mean, if you just look at Champions League, uh, uh, like league games don't really become that important because they're not one-off games. And the last two Champions League finals he was at, he had Lionel Messi with him. So in terms of like proving something on his CV, this is this is probably it. He hasn't won a Champions League without Messi, and. It's by been the eight way, years now. Neil, I'm going to ask. I'm going to add to what you said. Messi, by the way, they uh, drew with Levante today and pretty much lost their hopes to win uh, La Liga, and so that might bring Messi conversation back to life uh, again. Well, I think God wants Athletic Madrid to win the Spanish league. Like the <laughs> stuff that happened this weekend is crazy. Like last today. week, yeah. but but let's go back to last week. They were winning the game. Or was it last week? I think they were winning the game and it was by one goal. And the other team in the 90th minutes gets a penalty against them and it gets saved or it doesn't go in. And then and then Real Madrid went up one nothing against the team that they played this weekend and that got called yeah. offside. And then they tied. So first of all, Atletico tied with Barcelona. And then Real Madrid tied with with uh, whoever Sevilla. they were playing. Sevilla. And I know Sevilla is doing good in the league, but it, it's it's just it, it's just like whew. And I just think every week. And today, Barcelona. And then today, Levante. Barcelona was in a, was it was it a three three game or something like that? Three three Levante, yeah. Levante is like that, a team. Where was Levante in the league? 
towards the bottom. Lower, yeah, low mid table. Yeah. So, 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 so God's like, no, we, this is for Atletico. Like, <laughs> so first of all, I want to congratulate Inter. Inter, you won the league. I didn't do that last week. Uh, Bayern, you won your league. Congratulations, congratulations, Man City. Uh, Porsche, Have you heard the story about Inter Milan? No, what? The, the, the owners of uh, potentially going to ask the players to forego two months' wages in the summer um, to save the club twenty five million because they've got financial issues. It's a good thing they didn't ask them that mid season. <laughs> 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 they have to pay 15, 15 mil penalty for joining Super League because everything mm. that pulled out that's 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 the yeah. penalty. They're, so, they're, so they want they're the trying, players to pay that? No, they want the players to just go for two months in the summer with with no wages while they're not playing. Because the the Chinese owners have some real issues right now. They had to liquidate the club they owned in the Chinese Super League. Um mm. that club went like gone and they've got some real issues. So there could be some bargains to be had from uh, from Inter Milan this summer. There, there's rumours. Con- I mean, Conte's been linked with the Spurs job as well. Um, oh, I'll take which, him. I'll take him. Well, he, he's he's a, he's a winner, so he wouldn't really be a fit there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was a half folly. <laughs> um, but no, but, he, but he, he's potentially on the market, and he would be he would be a great um, you know a, a great candidate. I think um, I think him and Allegri are the only like proper serial winners that are in link with the job. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah I, in, in, Inter got some issues. There you go. I, I, I can see Conte going to Spurs. I, mm. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, he's but, probably a more high profile uh, manager than the Spurs job. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah I if mean, he does, if he has to go somewhere, if, if but he, he would probably go to Madrid or Barcelona. I mean, they they'll probably be looking for coaches too, right? So, I think that's but the level he would, wants. Would, would Madrid want that's to play Conte style? That would what be an style are they playing now? Did you see those two games? Yeah, but but they're they 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 can still win the league now. Mm. They can they can win. Yeah, but they can win the league uh, playing. I mean, it's this is assuming that there is a vacancy. Right. right? Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, I would, yeah. I mean, Zidane didn't have that much to work with, you know. Like, it's not he the didn't. best of Madrid team. He didn't. It's not like an incredible Galacticos type of a team. I mean, Kumar uh, messed up more because Barcelona has a lot of good players on this team. And oh, no, but not the last three Barcelona games. Will get, Barcelona will get Xavi, though. If Kumar goes, Barcelona will get Xavi from Qatar. Because last three games, Barcelona lost at home to, I think, Celta Vigo, and now 3 3 with Levante. I mean, they had, they but, had the league in their hands. But, they had but the, the, their hands. The, the players are still young, like, they don't know. At how to, to handle this? Hold on a second. No, but they, they got Pedri. The, how do you handle this part of the season without experience? Like, it, it, of experience. It, it doesn't. Busquets. You can't just you. Can, I, the Busquets is old, bro. <laughs> That's experience. But, nah, bro. <laughs> but I'm talking about the young players, the key spots on the field where you need experience. It's 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 just tough so i don't blame kuman i think kuman to get them in a position where they could have won it is fair in a season with so much turmoil and chaos and to get messy playing and liking to play with those people after and then just boss as an organization joining the super league and before that the investigation like the police arresting their prior president and this is and Leaks in the in the club. Kuman has done a great fucking job. I disagree. I think right. with this team, he should have won La Liga. They have by far the best roster from all of the, all the teams in the La Liga, and they have Messi, who is again unhappy. And uh, I, I'm not gonna blame Messi if he if he leaves and goes to the city. It was very quiet. Listen, it was very quiet around Messi for the last uh, six months, which gives me a hint because that's how it works in football that he will leave because it was so quiet. All right, we'll see. All right, we're going to bounce. Aaron got a baby. I'm going to keep him, but... Uh, I want to give a quick shout-out. Go ahead. Because, I, you know, as you're saying, all the all the teams that have won the leagues, uh, Chelsea women uh, won their ba- you know, second back-to-back uh, league. Uh, Super League. The, the Women's yeah. Super League in, in, in the UK over this, over this weekend. And they're also in the finals of the Champions, the Women's Champions League. It's the first What's time. The team? Alonso. Uh, what was that? Was Alonso on the team? 
<laughs> now we get, I think they're better players than Alonso in that team. Yeah, it's, but, it's a big win. It's a big win for them against Bayern in the semis because Bayern are a real powerhouse yeah. in women's European <laughs> football, and the, the final against Barca will be a great, a great game. Yeah, and they're down to one after the first leg, and Emma Hayes, who I think is kind of like building a huge legacy uh, uh, by now, and she said that you know we didn't get the result we wanted, but I'm gonna make sure that these uh, these players play the best game of their lives in the second leg. And they did it. They won 4-1. And uh, in the final, uh, it's going to be it's gonna be a good game. So, yeah, shout out to those guys. They showed one of those games and uh, they repeated it too, but I didn't get a chance to watch it because I, I was watching so much other stuff. Like uh, I watched uh, Dortmund versus uh, Leipzig this weekend. That actually, mm. They played that on regular ESPN as opposed to Plus, which you got to pay for. So it's yeah. it dope to see Sancho like do his mm. thing, but uh, and yeah. all right, women. And as as we are, we, I have to add my little little shout out then here, uh, as uh, as Neil did. I'm gonna add my little shout out since you mentioned Bundesliga. Uh, Robert Lewandowski, 39 goals in 27 games, absolute machine. The record, uh, the historical record for from Greg Miller from 71, which is 40 goals. He's got two games. Two games to score two goals to beat him to one to tie. Uh, he if won't he do it. Yellow, if he gets yellow card in the next one against Freiburg, he'll be suspended. So you don't want him to get yellow card because then it's only one game. So he's got two games with the fact that he was injured and he missed so many games that he still has a shot. Uh, it's absolutely incredible. And listen, you know, there are some rumors. There are some rumors that he might be available this summer for a big move to either Man U or Chelsea. We'll see. Or City. We'll see. I know we'll see. Like at the end of the transfer window, it, it, yeah, it's going to be interesting. But anyway, guys, we got to bounce. Thank you, Aaron Burn God. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Be safe. Uh, enjoy your football. Uh, you know, be health conscious. Take care of yourself. Love each other. Thank you, guys, for coming on. Uh, Lee from your Chelsea room. I mean, Neil from your Chelsea room. <laughs> Lee with your Porto jersey on. And Martin, you look like a murderer. Mm. <laughs> but from the movies or some shit. You just look like a henchman. Am I the only one here that thinks Martin just... <laughs> has, is, are you up for a role? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right, that's I mean, I, I, was, I was filming. That was, I was completely shaved for, for filming for over a month. So now I'm growing my hair back a little bit. But it kind of limits my options. So I have to be very... Uh, creative with my wardrobe uh, for some roles, uh, but I know that it it limits my options for. You've been for... you've been booking a ton of stuff lately. Congrats! Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been I've been, uh, and so I had more time to treat football just for 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 the love of it, you know. And you look with a different eye uh, on football when it's just for the love of it, and 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 it's it's the best uh, it's the best entertainment when when you're busy with other stuff. Sure. This is this is what having Jose Mourinho as a manager in 2021 can do to you. Does it just completely turn you <laughs> off the game? <laughs> you didn't mention, by the way, Neil, that Mourinho is now like people in Roma are super crazy about Mourinho. They're, they're naming like ice cream after him. They're like super happy with Mourinho came. Super happy. Well, well, they might as well do it now because by the time he's finished coaching, they won't be this happy. So it's all right. <laughs> let, them, let them get excited now. All right, guys, we got to bounce. Thank you, Aaron Berngard, producer of the Soccer Comic Rant, All Things Comedy. We out. Thanks, guys.